So uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this uh, workshop uh, by Dr. De uh, Mandy Ling. Um, I just want to ask uh, how many of you have uh, attended uh, yesterday's uh, talk by Mandy? Raise your hand. Oh, okay. Well, a few. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, today actually we're very happy to have uh, Dr. Ling again to give us this workshop and he will teach us how to make a pen with the uh, aluminium can. I think each of you will have one, uh, two of you will share one can and then he will also teach us how to do some calligraphy lettering. Yeah. Uh, before we start, maybe I should give a brief introduction about Dr. Ling. Um, Dr. Ling, uh, he is a well-renowned uh, calligrapher a uh, designer as well as a educator. And he's currently the um, program leader of MA in Design and Senior Lecturer in Design in the University of Sunderland in the UK. He actually specializes in uh, lettering, in typographic design, in calligraphy, Western calligraphy, as well as uh, editorial design. Um, Dr. Ling has actually has a, a number, has many exhibitions uh, in many countries and this is actually his first time to exhibit in Hong Kong. So I, walk, I invite you to go up to the ground floor to see the exhibits. And the exhibition will last until June 18, so you still have some time to go. Yeah, and okay, so um, you may not know that Dr. Leng is born, was born in Hong Kong and so he can speak uh, Cantonese very well. So I, I'm wondering how many of you uh, don't understand Cantonese? Oh, one or two of you. Okay, so we'll sp uh, still speak in English, yeah. And so uh, allow, please join me in welcome Dr. Ling to, give, to start the workshop. I must apologize, I lost my voice from last night to here. I don't know where it's gone. But um, so do, do excuse my voice. Can you hear me okay? On the back, is it okay? No. Someone sort of, oh, can I use your microphone? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, can you hear me better now? Yeah? Okay. Uh, yeah, I do apologize about my voice. Um, I don't know where it's uh, gone to, so uh, do bear with me. Um, what I'm going to do today is to show you how to make a folded pen using an um, aluminium can. You could say it's a way of recycling the can, make good use of it. Um, it's just a very versatile tool. You can write, obviously, Western calligraphy and Chinese calligraphy, and you can use it to draw, to sketch. You could almost do anything with it, so it's very, very good. Um, I thought it might be interesting to show you a range of tools that I have here. Um, obviously, this pen here, for example, the nib is wider, so that allows me to do larger writing, yeah? Whereas this one, for example, the nib is quite narrow, so um, I can only do sort of writing about five millimeter with this. Um, you can use a toothbrush to do lettering as well. I could quickly demonstrate all these. This is a wonderful um, brush pen made by Pentel. Um, it, it has a cartridge, so you don't have to dip it into ink. So that's, I use that quite often for brush lettering. And if you want to get into Western calligraphy, I recommend um, this Pilot uh, pen. Uh, it's called a parallel pen, and you can buy these from Amazon. Okay, you have Amazon in Hong Kong, right? No. Okay, uh, you have to look online then. Sorry, I assume you had Amazon. Um, I would recommend the 6mm, uh, which is about this kind of size. So it's good for initial practice. So um, when I teach calligraphy to beginners, this is the pen that I um, get them to use because it uses a cartridge. <clears throat> Um, so you don't have to worry about dipping your pen into inks, but um, you can also dip it into ink as well if you want to. So what I would do, I'll just quickly show you the different um, lettering that you can do with the different tools, and then we will go into uh, the making of the uh, folded pen, okay? Oh, by the way, if you have any questions, just put your hand up. Uh, it's really informal. Um, I won't shout at you if you interrupt me, okay? so. 
Um, I want you to enjoy yourself and I want you to just relax and just have fun basically. Okay? So. <clears throat> Okay, is this better? No. Yeah. Is this better? No. I'll, I'll use both. Okay, don't worry. <clears throat> okay. So I'm right. <clears throat> so I'm writing um, a script called the Italic script, which came from the 15th century in Italy. The within the um, developed within the Renaissance period, because um, at that time scholars were trying to think of a way to write more quickly. Um, so they developed this script, which allows you to do that. Okay, so it's quite easy, you know. <laughs> okay, now, <clears throat> obviously with any kind of creative um, discipline, once you know the rules and the discipline, you can then create your, your own kind of style, because we all have different personalities. Um, I much prefer to write quicker. Um, some people prefer to write very, very slowly, and their letters are beautiful. Whereas mine is very quick, and I've just kind of make things up as I go along. So that's kind of my personality, I suppose. So, um, so I can demonstrate what I mean by that. <clears throat> So as you can see, <clears throat> this is quite different. Um, I suppose it has more speed and energy in the writing, um, and so on. Okay. I just want to show you that you can actually write with almost any tool. So I have an old toothbrush here. Um, you, can, you can do lettering with uh, a twig, a feather, any found object, really. Roll up a piece of paper, money, anything you want. Literally anything you can dip into ink, you can make letters with. This is the Pentel brush pen. So you can actually do something quite, quite quickly um, with different tools. <clears throat> now I'm going to use the folded pen. 
So this is the pen that we're going to make today. Okay. Um, with this, I normally have to stand up to write because with calligraphy, <coughs> it's all to do with the movement. It's a very gestural um, form of art. So with this, it's much easier if I stand and I have a much wider arm movement because if I sit down, I'm kind of restricted to, to what I can um, move. So if you excuse me, I'll stand up. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so I just want to show you quite quickly <laughs> something like that. Okay. Now, don't worry if you make splatters and things, because that's all part of the lettering. So if you get splatters, that's actually good. OK, so don't look for the perfect stroke or neat. Um, you need to have some kind of life in the uh, writing. So if you get splatters like that, that's good. Just be careful if you're wearing white uh, tops. <laughs> you might get ink uh, on you. All right, so. <clears throat> So depending on how you, sorry. So depending on how you, um, okay, you can. Depending on the angle and how you hold the pen, you can you can create lots of different kinds of lettering. Okay, so um, I will give you time to just play with the pen. But initially, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you step by step of how to. Um, Cut the can, can, okay? So we do everything step by step. So we'll, I'll show you how to cut the can first. Each can you can cut up to um, four um, nibs. If you don't like, you can make four pens out of one can. All right. Um, so we'll, we'll just do that first, okay? And then I'll show you the next step and then the next step and so on. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. If any of you are like confused, like, ooh, what's going on? Just Put your hand up and I'll come over and help you, okay? So don't, don't be shy, all right? So the first step is to, to uh, desecrate this can, unfortunately. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> okay, um, you need a pair of scissors. And you literally have to punch a hole through the can. It's, it's not that difficult. These aluminium are very soft. So I'm just going to do that 
uh, if you can watch, and then um, I'll, I will talk about it later. Um, okay, so um, what I should do is... Okay, so again, I find it much easier to stand and do this rather than sitting down. So what I'll do is I'll just press the scissors down into the can, okay? I know, it's very brutal. I hate doing it. Uh, okay. And then you literally just cut the top away. It's horrible sound, isn't it? Okay. Do this on the top of a piece of paper, then it'll catch any kind of bits that's fallen. Um, Sometimes there's a bit of liquid in there, so just put it on the paper. Okay, the next step, now obviously this is quite sharp, there's sharp bits in here. Okay, so I want you to be very careful. I haven't had anyone who cut their fingers off yet, so I've been teaching this a long time, so don't be the first one. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so be very careful. What I do is I tend to hold the can like this, yeah? So I'm not touching the sharp bits. Then what you do, the next thing you do is to cut down the can like this. Okay? See that? Can you see that? Oh, hang on. Uh, I'm trying to adjust my angle. Yeah. You basically cut down here. Okay? Yeah? And then... And you cut the bottom off. So what you should have is a long piece like this, uh, like that. Okay? Yeah. Quite simple. Yeah. I think you, you should be able to manage that. Uh, before you do anything, you see the, the sharp bits at the bottom. I think you should just cut that off first to make it smoother. Um, actually, what I would do normally is I cut that in half, roughly. And then half again. Okay, so I have four pieces. Yeah? And then I cut away the, the sharp bits. Okay, so I should have four pieces, right? Okay, so do you think you can do that for me? Okay, right, off you go, please. <clears throat> okay, have you all got your four pieces? Anyone still cutting? No? Okay. Right, could you look at the, the screen again, please? What we're gonna do now is if you just Select one, okay. Uh, screen one, yeah. Okay, just have one. Sorry, you can't see. Did they time play it over? Yeah, okay. So you have one, okay. Yeah. And what you do is fold it in half. Could you all do that for me? Okay, fold it in half. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The next bit uh, is a bit tricky. I need to perhaps draw it. So this is your folded 
piece, yeah? Make sure the fold is at the bottom, so the top is open, yeah? Does that make sense, okay? The next thing is quite hard, you need to visualize what I'm trying to show you, okay? Because it's not very clear on the screen. So I'm gonna draw what you need to do, all right? <clears throat> So what I want you to do is, sorry. <clears throat> what I want you to do is to cut away this part, okay? Both the top and the bottom layer. So you end up with a shape that looks like this, like a, like a snow boot or Ugg boots, yeah? Do you remember Ugg boots years ago, yeah? Um, so that kind of shape, all right? Um, make sure when you cut this part here, is is nice, nice and smooth, okay? Um, but I'll, I'll demonstrate how you cut this. It's, it's actually quite easy, it's just like cutting paper. So I start from my right bottom corner, making sure the folded edge is at the bottom, okay? And then I literally cut my curve shape and then straight down like this. So I end up with a shape like that. Uh, the screen, sorry. <laughs> like that. If you look at the screen, yeah, okay. So then the top is open. Yeah, so the bottom edge is folded, okay. All right, so just to let you have a look again, make sure the folded edge is at the bottom and then you, you start from this corner, do a curved shape and then cut straight down like that, okay. Okay, are we, uh, are we all back? At your table, yeah. Right. Okay. So now we have this. Um, the, sorry. <laughs> Go back to the table. Uh, now we have the first part of the the nib. Okay. The next thing we have to do. So imagine this is your nib, right? Next thing we have to do is to cut away the top layer of the rectangular bit. Okay, um, so that you are left with the back layer intact, okay, and then front cut away. The, the depth of that, okay, depends on the thickness of your stick, all right? So basically, it's a bit difficult to explain. Um, right, so if you just watch the screen carefully, Okay, so that's the thickness of my stick. So basically, I'm going to cut up to the top of that stick. So I'm going to cut away all that bit there. Okay, I don't know. Oops, sorry, you can't really see. Um, so I'm going to cut away that top bit, just the top layer, not the bot, not the, not both layers. So I'm just going to show you now. Okay, just be patient with me. Um, so I'm going to cut away, sorry, I keep moving, I'm going to cut away the top layer, okay, and then I'm going to cut away horizontally, okay, so I'm left with, uh, if I may, left with that. Is that clear? So I've just cut away that part. Yeah? Can you work that out? It's very difficult to 
explain it. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, actually, if you look at the screen again, okay, so that's the thickness of the, the stick. Yeah? Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah? So can you do that for me, please? I forgot to mention for the... Um, for, for, the, for the, the back plate, if you like, you also need to cut a vertical slit down so that it allows you to, to wrap this round the stick. So the next step is to put your stick inside the nib. However, I don't know if you can see, um, the end of the nib shouldn't go too far or shouldn't go to um, not far enough. So I don't know if you can see that. Uh, right, can you see the inside? Yeah? It's roughly about there. Because if you have it not deep enough, OK, the, the nib becomes very uh, fragile. So I'm uh, trying to get the angle right. Yeah, so push it in about, about there, about, what, the centimeter, OK? there and then what you do then you just literally wrap the oh sorry I'm not you wrap that around the stick and then if you can tape it to the stick as well so if you look at the screen I'm taping the nib to the stick so that it doesn't come off Okay, so I want you to get to that stage, please. Right, once you've attached the, the nip to the uh, stick, it's just one last thing you must do to make it work, okay? Um, so you only need to have a tiny bit of tape, uh, like that, okay? Right, yeah, tiny bit of tape. And what you do is you, you tape the top of the nib Make sure it's quite tight. Okay? So the idea then is that um, the side of the nib is not too open. All right? Okay? So basically, something like that. So that's the last bit of, of the pen making. And once you've done that, we can start writing. All right? So... Okay, so are we, are we all there? Are we ready to write? Yeah? Are you guys listening? Are you ready to write? Yes? Okay, right. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to practice some strokes first. Now, you can hold the pen as you would normally, like a pencil. Okay, or you can have the overhand hold like that, okay? Um, yeah, I, I use either. So whichever is more comfortable for you. Another thing is you might want to stand up to do this because I find it much easier. So it's up to you, okay? Right. <clears throat> If you watch the screen, uh, if you could do a diagonal stroke first, which points to roughly uh, 10 o'clock, okay, 10 o'clock direction. So literally just come down like this to get the angle right, okay. So it's pointing towards roughly 10 o'clock, 10, 11 o'clock. Again, it doesn't have to be very exact, just roughly so that you can do a very thin line like this, okay? Okay? Just want you to get used to that. So if you could do a roll of these lines, that would be great. All right, okay? <clears throat> now, get used to moving your paper. So as you come along, um, if you find that you're running out of room, 
move your paper so you're always writing roughly to the center of your body. Okay? Particularly when you're sitting down. All right? So do move your paper if you have to. Okay? Yeah? Is anyone having problems? Okay. You don't need to do the arrows. <laughs> you can just do the diagonals. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think most of you got the idea. So, right, if you watch the screen again, please. This is quite important. So, as I make my 10 o'clock stroke, I'm now going towards my 2 o'clock. Can you see the difference? It's a great big thick stroke. So if you could do the 10 o'clock stroke and then the 2 o'clock stroke. Essentially you're making like a V shape, okay? Can you, can, you feel, can you see the difference in the thickness of the line? Yeah? So you're keeping the same pen angle. That's the key, right? So don't change the pen angle, okay? So 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, come down and then head towards your two o'clock, okay? Keep to the same pen angle, all right? Oh yeah, if you're left-handed, you do the opposite. <laughs> yeah. The beauty of this pen is, is, is um, you, can, you can use both hands to do it. Okay, that's great. Um, could you watch the screen again? <clears throat> so, I'm, coming, I'm doing my 10 o'clock stroke. This time, I'm raising my pen higher. Okay? And I'm doing my 2 o'clock stroke. Can you see the stroke is thinner? Okay? That's purely because as I'm lifting my pen higher, I'm using less of the nib, so the thickness of the line is thinner. Okay? So you could try both. You could try the thick one, and then you can try the thin one by raising the, the angle of the, how you hold a pen. Okay? So if you could do a line of fixed stroke, so alternate lines of fixed stroke and fin stroke, then that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you have filled a sheet, just pull it up to one side or on the floor or somewhere. Um, or you can put it on top of your assisting sheet. It doesn't really matter. Okay, can you have a, a new sheet of paper? Or continue if you've got space, okay? Now what we're going to do now is, we're going to ignore the 10 o'clock stroke, we're just going to straight to um, 2 o'clock, okay? So, but quicker. So there's kind of a, a lifting off. As you go up, you lift off, like taking the airplane, lift off. Okay? And again, if you could practice the height, how you, you know, hold the pen, lower or higher. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Just as a practice, then, could you could you do a long stroke and a short stroke? Long stroke, short stroke, like this. Practice the lifting off. Okay. But do it quickly. Right, we're going to practice the downstroke now, so that's essentially coming from your 2 o'clock heading towards your 7 o'clock. Okay, so I'll show you. So it's coming down. Again, you lift off. So from 2 o'clock, 
roughly to your seven o'clock. Okay. If you're left-handed, it's opposite. <laughs> okay. And again, try long and thin strokes. So, sorry, um, long and short strokes. Okay, so if you watch the screen again, what I'd like you to do now, so we have learned to do the upstroke up to the two o'clock, and then if you could do a downstroke from two to seven o'clock. So if you watch the screen, it's essentially up, down, up, down like this. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> the final um, straight strokes you have to learn is traveling from your nine o'clock to your three o'clock or the opposite. All right? So it's horizontal stroke basically. So if you look at the screen, okay, you're just essentially making a horizontal stroke. So you can go from the nine o'clock or from to the three o'clock or three o'clock to the nine o'clock. Right? So if you could do that. Okay. Right. So you're doing very well. If you just watch the screen now then. So essentially we've learned the kind of the basic vertical and horizontal strokes to construct some of the letters. So if you think about it, letter A is literally an upstroke, okay, and then changing the direction, and then a horizontal stroke, yeah? Just three strokes to give you a letter A, for example, okay? A lowercase a is this, and then up, and then that. Or you could do it quicker. Yeah. <clears throat> There's so many different ways of doing it. Yeah, there's no right or wrong uh, way of doing these letters, really, as long as it looks good. Okay, so that's generally the rule. So as long as you can make a letter that looks good, then, then it's okay. So you can see some examples here on the screen. There's just so, so many different ways to write a letter A, for example. It's really up to your own imagination and creativity. Okay? Okay. Um, I know I'm rushing you a bit, but we, we only got a limited amount of time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to do the curve strokes. And once you know the curve strokes, you can then do the whole alphabet, I suppose. Yeah? Okay. The curve strokes is it's relatively easy, as long as you can move your arm smoothly. Okay? So essentially, I'm pointing towards my 11 o'clock when I start and I'm going in this kind of direction, all right? For example, to make my own. However, if I were to make a B, okay, I'm going the opposite direction. So you're just following the, the, the movement of your arm, really, to make the, the shapes, okay? Or you could go this way, for the C, or this way, yeah? 
So just practicing that, that, that movement, I suppose, okay? Okay, right, shall we have some fun now? Is that what you're doing? I want you to get a new piece of paper. What I want you to do now is to try and express the meanings of some words through your lettering. This is where the artistic interpretations can come in, okay? So don't worry if you're not an artist. It doesn't matter. I'm not really an artist. So I'm doing all this stuff, so, okay. Um, what I want you to do is, uh, I'm going to give you some words to write, and I want you to um, see how you can express those words through your writing. So, for example, if I say big, could you write me the word big, but make it look big? Okay? Okay. There's some really interesting interpretations, so may I... For example, take this piece of work. So if you look at this one here, uh, okay, <clears throat> we have a very big B and then two smaller uh, letters, I and G. So that enhances, you know, the feeling of big, right? So that's quite nice. Uh, oh, this one is quite cool. Can I borrow yours? Thank you. I suppose this one is quite literal. It's, the student here has literally filled the whole paper with the word big. So it's, it's very big, right? Yeah? Okay? It makes you smile, so I think that worked. Well done. <laughs> so there's no right or wrong, really, sometimes, with what we do. It all depends how how we interpret things. Um, you could, I suppose, you see, when you write big, it doesn't have, you don't have to write it big. You can make the, the strokes quite big. So, for example, if I have, um, if I keep, make, making the stroke very, very thick. I suppose that looks big too, yeah, even though the letters are quite small, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be that big to make it look big. Okay, um, what about the word tall? Can you express the word tall? You can use a new piece of paper if you want. So think about it. How are you going to write tall visually? Okay, what I want you to do next is just um, a quick... Um, method to make a booklet, okay? So what I want you to do is to fold a piece of paper in half, horizontally, and then fold it in half the other way. Okay, so you have four segments, okay?
Okay, one more paper. And then fold it within again so you get eight segments like this portrait. Can you all see? Eight segments. What I want you to do next is to cut the middle part of that. So just going to Okay, so you have um, a slit like this in the middle, across the middle two segments, okay? Okay, the next step is to fold the paper horizontally. Okay, and then from middle you need to make um, almost like a, a, a box. Like that. Okay. And once you have that, you just push it towards the middle and fold it up, and then you have a little booklet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is quite an easy way to make a, a booklet out of one piece of paper. So what I'd like you to do, once you master that, is to pick a, a piece of work that you've just done. Ideally one that's dried, yeah? And, and do the same. So having the design facing out. Okay. And make the same booklet again. or by random. Oops. Louise. Who's Louise? That's lucky. <laughs> He's going to write your name. Carly? Carly? I think it's Carly, right? Is it Carly? All oh, right, okay.
Oh. Cherry. Cherry, cherry, cherry. Okay. Janice. Janice? Hi. Okay. 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 Ready? One. Two. How many are you going to draw? A uh, couple. Maybe. Couple. Okay. We have five, five more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Shark. Who's shark? Hey, a boy. Okay. Good. Okay. <clears throat> Here you go, shark. <laughs> Maybe the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who is the lucky one? You want to pick? Okay. Special one. Okay. Yeah. Ariel? Is that how you pronounce it? Ariel, yeah. Is it Ariel? Ariel Yao. 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 Oh. Okay.
Okay, right. I hope you enjoy yourself today. Um, just a quick introduction to, to Western lettering. Um, obviously, you know, uh, you only had two hours on it, so with a bit more practice, I'm sure you could do a better job than me. So, yeah. And thank uh, you so much, Dr.